Hello, everybody. It is Wednesday, September 28th, 2022, and it's time for this week's Two Minutes with Jeff. So last week, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell came out and did his September speech that he does when they when they do when they talk about raising the interest rates. And he came out and he did exactly what everybody thought he was going to do, exactly what everybody thought he was going to do. And yet the market hated everything after that happened or what he had to say, like hated it. And it literally just, I don't want to say tanked, but it, it's, it sent the market down in a, in a tailspin. And basically yesterday we hit low lows of 2022. So yesterday, September 27th, was the lowest point that the Dow Jones Industrial, the S&P, had hit for the entire year. So there was no lower point, you know, uh, past yesterday. Yesterday was basically the worst day of 2022. Not, I mean, not the worst, but the lowest. So having said that, let's, let's dive into why that, that happened. So first of all, I want to give you some... Uh, I want to I want to give you some information that you can actually impress your friends with if you try to have a conversation with them about real estate or mortgage rates or something like that. So the the Fed, the Federal Reserve, they don't actually control mortgage rates, like how much you know your mortgage interest rate is. The Federal Reserve actually only controls one rate, and that's the Federal Reserve rate. Okay, well, what's the Federal Reserve rate? So this is a rate that banks charge each other to lend money back and forth. It's a short-term interest rate. So basically behind the scenes, you have Chase, you have Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Huntington, all these banks, they lend money back and forth to each other, you know, behind the scenes, something that we don't see on a normal basis. The average person just doesn't see it. It's happening behind the scenes. Well, when they lend money to each other, they're going to charge each other interest, right? I mean, nobody's going to lend their money out for free. So the Fed rate is the rate at which these banks charge each each, each other banks, uh, each banks, you know, when they lend money back and forth. So that's really the only rate that the Federal Reserve controls. And when we talk about them raising the rate, that's the rate that we're talking about them raising. Now, that is pretty – the other interest rates – Mortgages, so mortgage interest rates are pretty closely tied to the 10-year treasury bond. Um, but the Federal Reserve rate kind of acts as uh, a guidance, I guess you can say. So when, when that goes up, you can kind of expect all these other interest rates to follow suit. So having said that, that's a, that's a little tidbit that you can use to impress your friends that the Federal Reserve only really controls the Federal Reserve rate and mortgages are more closely correlated to the 10-year Treasury bond uh, rate. So there you go. So having said that, Jerome Powell comes out last week. He says, what everybody, what everybody expected, hey, we're going to raise the rates 75 basis points, which is three quarters of a percent, 0.75. And cool. Cool. That's what everybody expected, right? That's okay. Hey, he did exactly what we expected. Some people kind of speculated maybe it was going to be 100 basis points, a full percent, but it wasn't. It was 75 basis points. Great. So what happened? Well, it was after his announcement of, of as what he kept on speaking about is what really caused everything to really go down in a tailspin. Um, yesterday, September 27th, was the... Uh, low lows of 2022 in the in the stock market and the Dow Jones and the S and P and the um, you know all the other major indexes. That's the those were the lowest they've been in all of 22 yesterday. So they haven't been any lower, and we are now what was that? That's six days later than his announcement last Wednesday. Um, yeah. So Jerome basically. You know, in a nutshell, he said that they are going to keep, you know, raising rates and doing whatever it is possible to combat inflation. This man is on a mission. I don't know if he wants to be labeled as a martyr, you know, in finger quotes to, um, you know, he's, he's just willing to do whatever to combat inflation, even if it does um, at the cost of hurting the, the economy. And he also hinted at, 
the you know they're projecting that unemployment may rise up to almost five percent again 4.4 percent was the number he said so um you're talking about higher interest rates unemployment uncertainty um you know a lot of other stuff going on globally right now that is just kind of uncertainty so it's kind of like it's there's not a lot of good news out there and i think that when Jerome kept speaking about, you know, going forward that they're going to do whatever it takes to combat inflation, people people didn't expect to hear that. And they didn't like it, and that's kind of what sent the stock market into a in a tailspin. So, uh, people did, or the reporters actually did ask him specifically about the housing market, and he, um, you know, he hinted at that the the issue lies within supply and demand, which is true. Um, because it is a supply and demand industry, but it's also an affordability industry too. You know, housing affordability is, is very low, meaning that it's, it's unaffordable. I mean, it's, it's very expensive for housing, especially new construction. I don't know if, if you've seen the cost of new construction, but it, it is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. You know, it's almost four, five hundred, six hundred thousand for just a brand new construction house nowadays. It's insane. So, you know, that's that's basically what he alluded at. And, and they're going to continue to raise rates, you know, until until they get this inflation thing under control. Um, if you remember two months ago, they thought they did where it actually went down a little bit. So, you know, I, I don't know. Um, rates are still going to be going up. Um, and also, too, these mortgage companies... They know that, you know, the interest rates that you're paying today are already based on future predictions. So they kind of bake the rate into um, the market. So, you know, the mortgage companies, they have to plan ahead. So their interest rates now are kind of reflective of what they think is going to happen in the future. So when Jerome Powell comes out and says all this stuff, it really didn't it it didn't really change interest rates on mortgages too much because lenders had already factored in that the fact that he's going to come out and and raise rates again on the fed rate and so you didn't really see mortgage rates change but i still think they will continue you know they're in the sixes right now pretty close to six six and a quarter they're going to still go up and i think i think we may get to seven so that's kind of where we're at. That's what happened last week. It was kind of a big news week. Um, I wanted all the dust to settle so that I can kind of get a grasp on everything and, and relay it to you guys. And, you know, they said they're going to continue to be hawkish and, and, and look at raising rates even into 2023. So let's talk about, let's talk about that if you're a buyer. So if you're a buyer, you know, right now is going to be the lowest time to lock in interest rates because the Fed has already come out. They've already basically, if you're playing poker, they showed their hand. They're, they're raising rates. It ain't going to get any cheaper in the foreseeable future. I would say even into 2023, they're not, they're not lowering the rates. So right now, right now is the lowest point that you're going to be able to lock in an interest rate right now. If you haven't done it already, right now is probably the lowest point. The good news, you're, you're, there's no need to panic. Even if rates are at six, six and a half, seven, no need to panic. Remember that real estate is a cycle. It's very cyclical. So at some point in time in the future, I can't predict when, but there will be, excuse me, there will be a point where interest rates will come down. Now, I don't know if they're going to come back to the good days of two and three quarter, three percent like we had, like we were spoiled with, but they're going to come down. So even if you get a rate at six and a half or seven, maybe in a few years, the rates are back to four and a half, five. And guess what? You can refinance. You can refinance. If you get a rate today that seems high to you in the future at some point in time, you can refinance. That is that is the beautiful thing about it. You're not locked into this rate to the end of time or for 30 years. You can refinance that mortgage when rates come down and you get a better rate. And you'll be able to save some money on your payment. That's great. So if you're a buyer, I mean, it's still it's still a good time to buy, especially right now. There's a lot of inventory on the market. You kind of, you're not fighting over stuff with people. 
And interest rates, yeah, they're higher. They're higher than what we've seen in the last three years. Okay, well, the economy's changed. We got inflation going on. We got a lot of things going on. But that's not to say three years from now, you buy today, three years from now, you can refinance again. I think that's a great plan. You know, it, nothing's nothing's forever, I guess, in real estate. On the seller side, you know, if you if you bought in the last couple of years and you're locked into one of those extremely low interest rates, if you don't if you don't have a reason to sell, if you're not getting relocated because of your job or you're not you know, there's you're not in some sort of distressed situation, there's no reason for you to sell. There's no reason because you're going to be buying at double the interest rate where you're paying right now. And the affordability, what you can afford is going to be way less than what you're expecting. So even if you have some equity in your home, you can put a big down payment down because you bought at a good time, your house appreciated, your interest rate is actually just going to crush you. So I would stay put if you, if you don't have a reason to sell. If there is not, like I said, you're not relocated for your job. You there's no hardship for some. You know you have a hardship. You can't afford your house. You lost your job. Whatever. If if none of those things apply to you, I'd just stay put. You know and hey, listen. I'd love to sell your home, but I don't want to tell you to sell your home just to sell your home. You need to. You know I'm, I'm trying to give you the best advice I possibly can. So. I know this was a long two minutes with Jeff, but a lot of things are going on. A lot of things happened last week. A lot of things are going to be coming, uh, co happening in the upcoming weeks, but I still want you to be informed. I still want you to know everything. If you have any questions, reach out to me. If you want to leave a comment on the video, that'd be cool. Um, I appreciate all 15 to 20 people that continue to watch these videos that I put out, you know, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I don't want to be no YouTuber sensation or whatever. I just want to inform people and, and keep, you know, people up to date with all what's going on in real estate. So that's all we got. Uh, until next time, have a great day.